when you're focused on the breath, you're focusing on what's called form. The breath is one of the elements that make up your sense of the body as you feel it from within. In other words, you're not concerned with how the body looks on the outside. You're concerned more with how you feel from the inside, what's called proprioception, or what the Buddha called form. There are basically four properties in this sense of the body you have here. There's a the breath, which they also call the wind property. There's warmth, the fire property. Coolness, the water property, and solidity, the earth property. All of these things are there throughout the body. But your primary experience of the body is actually the energy. And so when we focus on the breath, that's what we're focusing on, the sense of energy that flows through the body. Because we don't often see that as energy, it seems a little foreign. But it's actually the most immediate thing you sense about the body. So take a couple of good long, deep in and up breaths. And notice where that flow of energy is most obvious. Be the rise and fall of the abdomen, the rise and fall of the chest. The movement of the air through the nose. But you're primarily interested in the sense of energy, because that's what they're talking about when they talk about wind property or the breath. So if your thoughts go outside, just gather them back into the sense of the body right here. We're trying to develop a sense of pleasure here. So the next step is, when you're aware of the flow of energy, ask yourself, does it feel good? And feeling good is a very subjective thing. There are times when you want to be energized, times when you want to be relaxed. In other words, to bring things into balance. So ask yourself, what kind of breathing would be right for right now? What's the condition of your body right now? If you're tired, try to breathe in a way that's energizing. If you're tense, try to breathe in a way that's more relaxing. Or you can systematically experiment with different kinds of breathing, long versus short, heavy versus light, slow versus fast, deep versus shallow, and see where on the continuum between those, those extremes the breath feels just right for you right now. When John Lee borrowed an image from the Buddha, he said, you're like a cook, fixing the breath for you to, for yourself to, to partake of. And so notice, what do you want? What do you like right now? What's needed right now for a sense of well-being sitting here right here? Once you get a sense of ease with the breath, think of it spreading through the body. The Buddha's image is of a bathman. Back in those days, they didn't have soap. They had a kind of a soap powder, like a flower. And then you'd mix water with that, and you'd have this ball of dough, which was the soap that you would rub, rub over your body. And so they would prepare it by mixing the water with the soap dough, the soap flour. In the same way that you would knead water into flour to make bread. So you can think of making a survey down through the limbs, your arms, your legs, down through the torsos, and ask yourself, where does it feel like the energy is not flowing well? Can I help it along? 
kind of think of relaxing things right there, opening things right there. So the sense that the energy can flow easily, smoothly. Then work around the body time and again to get really familiar with how the breathing energy feels in the different parts of the body, and it feels good. And that's where you can settle in. But when you settle in, you're not settling in with a sense of pleasure. If you, if you just focus on the pleasure and leave the breath, then you've lost the, the foundation for the meditation. So stay focused on the breath and allow the pleasure to do its work for the body, easing things, making things more pleasant. Because it's your continued awareness of the breath that makes a sense of pleasure come up and, and be sustained. We developed this sense of pleasure, this sense of well-being, for several reasons. We talked about some of them today. This is the pleasure of form, i.e. the pleasure that comes from having the elements in the body and the properties of the body in good balance. And that gives you an alternative to sensual pleasure. As the Buddha said, this is a pleasure that is blameless, doesn't involve any unskillful qualities, which is very different from sensual pleasure. Think of all the unskillful and stupid things you've done over sensual desires. You know, although sometimes you'll hear people say you shouldn't get let yourself get stuck on concentration. Being stuck on concentration is much less dangerous than being stuck on sensuality. Nobody kills over jhana or steals or breaks any of the precepts. So you're not harming anyone. You're not developing qualities in the mind that will be harmful for you or for others. And at the same time, you're giving the mind a sense of pleasure that actually adds to its clarity. Because a lot of sensual pleasure makes the mind clouded. You get narrowly focused on one thing and block out everything else. As a result, the mind can't see itself clearly. But when you're centered with the breath and have your awareness spreading out through the body, the mind gets a lot clearer. You're more present to what's happening, and less likely to be <clears throat> knocked around by the good and bad things that come your way. So this is a form of pleasure that's a lot safer. The Buddha never says there's anything wrong with the, the search for happiness, the search for pleasure. It's just a matter of learning how to do it with wisdom, learning doing it with discernment. We all want to be happy. And you think that we would act in ways that would create happiness, but we look at our behavior. So many times we do things that lead to stress and lead to suffering. And we wonder why. Well, it's because we don't know what we're doing. But when the mind is centered and still like this, you can see more clearly what's coming up in the mind, what intentions are beginning to form. And you can decide whether you want to follow them or not. Because <clears throat> one of the skills that comes with breathing, especially as you get more sensitive to the breath energy in different parts of the body, you begin to see that different thoughts are associated with patterns of tension in different parts of the body. Maybe around the face, the neck, in your arms, your hands, feet, like any place in the body. And so as soon as there's a stirring someplace in the body, you realize, okay, a thought is beginning to form. In fact, you're actually at a position, when you're really quick, you can catch it before it clearly is a thought. It's just more of a stirring on the borderline between your awareness and the body. But all too often the mind will just label it as a thought and then run with it. And only after it's run with it for a while do we begin to realize that this is something good or something bad. By that time it's kind of late. You want to be on top of things before they happen. 
which is why it's <clears throat> part of the concentration practice is whatever stirring there is in different parts of the body, a little knot of tension developing, you want to breathe right through it. You don't want to wait to see whether it's a good or bad thought or anything. You want to have your first line of defense, that you can sense where the thought is coming from in the body, or what it's associated with in the body. And then if you breathe through that spot, allow the tension to relax, the thought doesn't have a place to stand. <clears throat> So you're more on top of things. And then when you've learned the skill of dispersing the thought in this way, then as you go through the day and thoughts come up in the mind, you see something unskillful has formed, you can breathe right through it. This puts you more in control. Because you have more clarity, you're on top of things. Which is why this pleasure is a higher form of pleasure than the pleasure of sensuality. When you're in your sensual, the world of your sensual fantasies, your sensual plans, you're not seeing things as they're happening, as processes. You're there in the world. And your views of things are going to be colored by the particular world or the particular desire that's forming that thought world. Whereas if you're staying with the breath, you can stand outside, and your vision isn't obscured. It isn't skewed by the desire. You can see the desire as something separate. And then you can decide, is this a good desire, is it a bad desire, is it something I want to identify with, something I don't? And you gain a sense that the lots of different members of your committee here in the mind Lots of different voices, some of which you can trust, some of which you can't trust. And being with the breath gives you a position where you're the chairman of the committee. Nobody else has grabbed the gavel. So you want to develop the skill that provides you with this alternative form of well-being. So when you're faced with pain, you don't have to go running to sensual pleasure, you can go to the breath. When unskillful mind states come up, and you know if you act on them, there's going to be trouble, you can go to the breath. Use the breath to undermine those mind states, to give you an alternative sense of pleasure right here, right now. We talked earlier about how a lot of us have, in our culture now, have a lot of problems with, with de delayed gratification. One of the best ways of learning how to delay gratification is to give you something good to be with here in the present moment, so you're not totally starved. And the gratification you're going to have is not waiting way down the line. You've got something that feels good, nourishing, right here, right now. So you've got this alternative. And the greater skill you can develop in knowing how to focus here and get in touch with this quickly, thoroughly, and for extended periods of time. It changes the balance of power in the mind. So the thirst for pleasure doesn't take over. You're feeding it with a different kind of pleasure. The pleasure that I said has no blameworthy qualities. It is actually helping with the clarity of the mind. This is a state of becoming, but it's a state of becoming that's really clear. That enables you to see other states of becoming as they arise. Which is why this is why the Buddha said insight comes from concentration. I mean it requires some insight to get into concentration. You have to have some understanding of your mind. This is the insight is a value judgment. You can decide well, the kind of pleasure from concentration would be better than the pleasure that you gain from your sensual desires. And then as the mind settles down, gets more solid, you're in a better position to make more subtle judgments on more subtle issues as they arise. So 
So as the Buddha said, without insight there's no concentration, without concentration there's no insight. The two qualities go together. The concentration is what gives you a grounding, a sense of well-being, so that when you start looking into the mind's unskillful ways, you don't, you don't feel threatened. Because a lot of insight will be just that, seeing how you've behaved in foolish ways. As a John Chow once said, watching your mind, it's a matter of watching the mind lie to itself. And you're going to learn how to see through the lies. So it's unpleasant to see how the mind has been tricking itself, but when you're coming at it from this point of view of a solid, balanced, stable state of mind, you don't find that threatening. You find it enlightening, liberating. You're no longer a slave to your old ways. This is what I mean when say that you're changing the balance of power inside. So the more skillful intentions in the mind, the more skillful voices in the mind get more and more in charge. And everybody benefits as a result. So however much effort it takes to get the mind to be willing to settle down with the breath, how many battles you have as you find the mind slipping off, coming back, slipping off, coming back, the effort is all worth it. Because as you finally get a sense of mastery in this skill, You find that it helps you become skillful in all sorts of other areas of your life. <laughs>